So in this video, we're going to find more probabilities using the tables. Uh, we're still looking at the standard normal distribution. OK, so we're going to want a diagram ready. OK, there we are. As I said, it doesn't need to be perfectly accurate. Um, so zero is our mean. So that's in the middle. So we should be able to directly go to number one and ask, right, what's the probability of Z being greater than zero? Well, how much have I shaded? I've shaded a half of the diagram. And so this is just 0.5, OK? Just as it was when we looked at the probability of Z being less than zero. Um, now, if you're asking, OK, well, what if probability of Z equals zero? What's the probability of Z being equal to zero? Well, um, to that I answer, the answer is zero. Okay, the probability of Z being equal to any particular value is actually zero. So it would be like, um, go out and find me um, a student across the country who is 17. What's the probability that they are exactly, exactly 1.5 meters tall? Okay, you won't be able to find someone who is precisely two the atom 1.5 meters tall. It's just absolutely impossible to do that. Okay, so that is how you should understand those equals two probabilities for a continuous distribution like this. Right, probably z being greater than one. Okay, right. So shader that bit. So we're now looking at this this shaded region here. OK, so the thing is, the tables only show you probabilities that are less than, OK? They don't show you greater than ones, which is a bit of a problem, OK? So when we do this, you need to think, OK, well, I can look up the probability of Z being less than 1, which is 0.84134, so that describes this shaded area, the, sh right, the area to the left. So if the whole thing's 1, then this is the same as 1 take away the probability of Z being less than 1. So this is 1 take away 0 0.84134 which is 0.15866. OK, so you've got to then think, OK, it's one take away the value that is in the tables. So likewise, for the probability of Z being greater than 2.52, OK, for that region, I need to do a similar calculation. It'll be 1 take away the probability of Z being less than 2.52. So 2.52, 2.0, 2.5, 2.52 is 0.99413. So 0.00587. And that will be the required probability. Right, so that's how we deal with greater thans there. Right, I'm just going to get myself a new diagram. Right, because now we'll look at the probability of z being less than minus 1. So minus 1 is down here. What's the probability then it being less than minus 1? Well, the thing about that is that I don't have any negative values in my, ca in my tables either, OK? Like I didn't have uh, any greater thans, I don't have any negative values. So how can I work this out? Well, the probability of z being less than minus 1, that region, because the, gra the diagram, the model, is perfectly symmetrical, actually, that area is precisely the same as that area. So that is exactly the same as the probability of z being greater than positive 1. 
So that is one take away the probability of z being less than 1, which we worked up at here. So 0.15866. OK, so you've got to use the symmetry of the diagram in order to visualize this. That's why a diagram is so important for these. Right, so if this had been negative 2.77, then that is precisely the same as greater than 2.77, right? For exactly the same reason. So that's one take away, the probability of z being less than 2.77. Right, 2.77. Naught point nine nine seven two zero. So naught point naught naught two eight is the correct probability. Right, so that's how you deal with greater thans and negatives. So bring it all together then. What about that one? OK. Right, so let's draw diagram. There's 0. So we've got minus 1.5. There it is. And then 2.3. So I'm wanting to find that shaded region. So how can you do that? Well. The way to think about this is that if I worked out the probability of z being less than 2.3, then that would give me everything from that dotted line down. Everything that way. I don't want all of it. I want all of that take away from that dotted line down, because I don't want that region. So I don't want z being less than minus 1.5. So this one I can easily look up in my calculator. This one I've got to remember that actually finding less than minus 1.5 is the same as the probability of z being greater than 1.5. And the way to calculate greater than 1.5 uh, is to then do one take away the probability of z being less than 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to have, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to have to go all the way up here with this nice big space up here I haven't used. Okay, so the probability of z being less than 2.3. So I can look that, that up in my calculator. So that's 0 0.98928. And I've got one take away. The probability of z being less than 1.5. So 0 0.93319. Okay, so let's do that on the calculator. 0 0.98. 8928 take away open bracket 1 take away 0 0.93319 and that leaves me with 0 0.92247 okay and so that's how we can find the probability for number 6 using our tables